we have a minimum, right, if right. D is positive and F X X is negative, we have a maximum. If D is positive, we have a saddle point and if D is negative. zero. Negative. If D is negative, negative. I meant negative. negative, I said it wrong. That's, that's what I do on these tests. I'll sit there and I'll say negative to myself, but I'll write a positive. I'll say positive to myself, and I'll write a negative. Translate it correctly. So, oh, jeez so, Louise. So, yeah. so, and I'll guarantee you D will not be zero. Yeah, oh, that was going to say D is zero inconclusive. You will be able to use D to I'm almost through all the homework assignments, mate. I'll have them all done tonight right. and ready for the exam tomorrow morning. Do you have any questions? Any, any ponderables? Any kind of, could you do an example of this? Or here's this problem with test. I think you did it wrong. I got a different answer. I reworked it 20 times. Yeah. Any kind of thing I can work through with you? Because I've made mistakes. That would be good for class. I don't make mistakes on the homework, it's just on the test. <laughs> <laughs> The question was asked, what's the hardest integration on the test? Something like this. The stuff in blue, before, you know, finessing it with the U sub, that's probably the toughest kind of integration you have to do, is maybe the U sub. Oh, like no, no, like trick sub or anything like that? No trick sub, no point trick sub. I like the trick sub. That was my favorite Dude, part of the test. That was a beautiful marriage of everything. Yeah, it was. Dude, I wanted to tell you also that, like, for real, it's like all this stuff is really starting to, like, come together, and I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Can you go through one of these, uh, well... Oh, I, I'll give you two the same um, benefit I've told everybody else. There is no optimization problem on the test. Okay. So the problem is with the minimum nice. distance and the, the volume of a, of a box that fits in the first octet and stuff. So it's just a detail problem. Did that like take away half of your questions that you had earlier? <laughs> yeah. See, I got well, if you're still working on a problem, you want to get some closure on. I can, I can go over something you worked on. That's where I stopped. That, that was the Y problem. I stopped right there. The coordinates before I sent you that email. That is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I did that. I did all that, and then I stopped right there. And then, and then I sent you that email, and then after you did that, then I went. Yeah, you can get both equations as x equals this and x equals this, and equate the y parts, yeah. and it's a quadratic. See, look, there's barely any erasing on these. See, because I'm trying to get what to do. What Okay, it's the same handwriting. For some yeah. reason, I thought you had a different handwriting. Oh, I do. I have many different forms. Because it's like, oh, some of them I'll write really fast, and some of them I'll write really neat, you know. You're rehearsing to be a doctor someday. Yeah, yes, sir. Exactly. Yeah. See, like, that one's really neat. Woes. See? That's, like, super neat. Yeah, it is. And then here's, I, I, I stopped for one of them. And your freehanded straight lines are really good, too. Thank you. Um, and made sure to, like, work through every bit of algebra practice like that. I did like every little piece of algebra to make sure that because that's what that's what I was just talking about. That's where I'll screw up. I'll write a negative instead of a positive or something like that. Or I'll oh, okay. Three that's negatives. Like angular okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you did, did you not pick up a calculator for that at all? That no. All that was just for no. Yeah. Ooh, better you than me. I'll be math frat, math frat, math frat, all that. <laughs> all right. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I have been on, on the uh, frat book on the other end since then, but I wanted to hone in my algebra. You can still get an exact value, yeah. not have to go through the whole common denominator was. Okay. So excited, because I'm, I'm probably okay. going to take it tomorrow morning. We have, excited. But we have every Thursday, is that what you're saying? The, um, through Saturday. Through Saturday. Saturday. I'll take it, i got to take it tomorrow morning. Testing centers hours. Let me close the test. <laughs> I would have taken it Monday, but I wanted to ask you these questions, and I had a physics. Who is to take this down? Tessa's hours. I want to take a picture of it. I think I got this on our Google Open screen. Boom. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Man. I was just, I got to check this out. Wow. Is that in oh, wow. Oh, is that in physics? Yeah. Oh, I hate you more. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we grabbed that. That one goes on the refrigerator. Yeah. Those, oh, that was the test. Yeah. Is that the most recent one with the? Yeah, uh, yeah, bottom. So everybody's okay with with gradient and directional derivatives. Anything there? The way I made the test out was I took that outline that I gave you for reviewing the test. I just took this, the review outline, and I said, okay, let me find a problem that relates to this. Let me find a problem that relates to this, this. And I kind of use this as my outline for making the test. I think I'm going to retake test two. This is the, the, yeah, this is at the end of test three's stuff on our D2L page. It's the biggest TLC review test three. Maybe it just says it's a review for test three, I think. Yeah. And it refers to problems on the old tests that you can look at. 
some of the some of the problems that I refer to, to uh, as part of the review are just partial derivative problems. Don't panic too much. I mean, you still need to know how to do partial derivatives just to do a gradient, but you don't have to do like the ones where you have to approximate the value of the partial with respect to y or the partial with respect to x. Is it positive or is it negative? That's not on your test. That was technically a test two topic, um, but but yeah. So I'm sorry if that overlaps with your test three information a little bit. Test. Ten problems total. A couple of problems have like parts A, B, and stuff like that, but I think it's manageable within a two hour limit. Hopefully. Probably have time to do the test twice. It's not pushing. This, I want to know. If you've got the time, you might as well listen to the answers. I've gone through and done like all the homework for a math exam. So, this is your first time doing like complete homework? Yes. Why did you do it now versus earlier? Is it because this is homework I wrote up? Because I'm I'm getting dangerously close to not earning an A for the first time in a math course. Oh no. There's still a lot of room. I mean, yeah. with only two tests in, you get to replace one test by retaking it. I mean, really you only have one grade edge stone. So twenty five percent of your test grade is always fixed. A lot of room for improvement. Oh, there's only about five weeks left in school? No, three. No. Three. Yeah. This, full, this week yeah, and two full weeks more. <laughs> yeah. Our last class old. meeting will be the, March, April, the, 20, the 30th of April. <laughs> January, February, March. I always have to do that to see which ones are 30 and which ones are 31. You never done that before? Okay. No. I'm glad I'm not the only person who did that. My mom, she was a third grade teacher. She taught us all that. I have to run through the third days past September. Oh, that little thing, the rhyme. Yeah. Good questions. They're okay? You seem okay. Not really inundating me with the questions I figured you'd have. So the final is on the sixth. Our final exam. Let me just double check the calendar. Let me see. Is it Tuesday, I think? It's a Tuesday of that week, yeah. It's Tuesday the 5th. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's Tuesday the 5th on this little makeshift calendar. Um, and it's the only test we'll actually do in here. I'll go ahead and do it in here. Unless you want to take it in the testing center, you're welcome to. You're fine if you want to do that. That way I can, you know, gather them all together and try to get them ready as soon as possible. There's a couple of you, I'm sure, who want to take it in the testing center. That's okay. Uh, finals, finals go through Thursday that week, so. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yes. Can we go over choosing our uh, limits? Yeah. Okay. Double. Choosing limits for a, a double integral. All right, let's see. Let me. Oh, yeah, that was fun. Like, working through. That, I thought that that was, that was probably okay. some of the most challenging stuff that we've done yet. Just trying to figure out exactly which one to did it first. Working through. Yes. Yeah. So there's only five or six actually. Yeah. That's what when I first came in, I was asking about this one. Yeah, because on that one you have to do, was it the lock first? Yeah, like how to find which one you need to use for your outer your outer limit. And it's to find the intersection. And then solve for your outer. Now I'm making this up off the fly, so yes. bear with me. Yes, you can set both of these questions. You can solve them for one or solve them for X. But then you'll get points, right? Yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, then you get your points, of, you get your one coordinates of intersection, and then point them for X. And then whichever you get to first, like in the X direction, if you're in the last way, and then the one that's in the Y direction, and then you come first, and then two. Okay. So let's say you had to yes. set up a double integral over this root. For some function. And you're specifically asking to, to set up the limits, things like that. Okay. So if you're just looking to set up the limits of integration for this, um, which order would you want to commit to doing first? X first. X first. Why do you say X first? Because you you're, just hit your A on the same next one. Yeah, that's what you want to check. Do a quick horizontal ray through this. And as long as you enter and exit on consistent boundaries, you always enter on the line, you always exit on the sideways parabola, 
it's safe to do x first. Then flatten this to the y-axis, and whatever these numbers are will be your y limits of the second interval. Why is it not practical to do y first? <coughs> yeah, because it changes right here. Yeah. You enter at the line, you exit at the sideways parabola there, but then here it's funky. You enter at the sideways parabola and you exit on the other half of the sideways parabola. So you'd actually have to commit to two different double integrals if you went the y direction first. So, but bless you. Thank you. So, yes, x is the best direction to do first. And from left to right, you're entering at, well, you set it up. We'll give you a couple minutes. Put yourself in a test <coughs> situation. To get a little pre-test practice. Now most likely your picture on the test will be drawn to scale. This one is nowhere near drawn to scale. It's, it's heinously, heinously off scale. Do you have any where we need to draw where we need to draw <coughs> sketch them out ourselves? I'm sorry. Do we need to sketch do we have any where we need to sketch them out ourselves? Not the test. There the is one where you have to change the limits of integration by doing exact or something. Change Change the order of integration. Let me pull up one like that and I'll do it here in a second. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, that's what I So who can I pick on? What'd you get for your X limits? Hopefully that's the easy part. Negative 3Y. Negative 3Y. So 4 minus Y squared, yeah. Oops, 4 minus Y squared. Then you got the Y limits. What'd you get for your Y limits? 4, negative 1. Yeah, negative 1 to positive 4. Is that what you got? Or negative 4 to positive 1. Let me double check. Both of these are solved for x, so the easiest way to get the intersection points is just to equate negative 4y, the x equation here, with 4 minus y squared, the x equation there. So if you set those two equations, y parts equal to each other, that'll tell you the y coordinates where these two points meet. And, and really, for the last limits, that's all you need are those two y coordinates where the parabola on the line meet. So that's quadratic. The paradigm shift there is to set equal to zero and factor or use the quadratic formula. That'll be a y squared minus 3y minus 4 when you get it set equal to 0. And then that should factor as y minus 4 times y plus 1. And that's why it's hashed just to make these up off the top of your head, unless you know something that can easily you know, work out like that. So you get y equals 4, you get y equals negative 1, representing those, those limits. And that's why I, I told you this is nowhere near drawn to scale. This is, ex this is a Right. <laughs> it's the off scale, yes. Because, yeah, that's, those are almost the same distance, so there's no way that's negative 1 and positive 4. But that, you know, trust the data, don't trust the image when you're drawing yourself. So your y limits should be negative 1 to 4 when you finish that. Okay. Um, one that you may have to graph yourself to determine the limits. Um, one like, well, I mean, these are kind of hard, these are really difficult to make up on the fly, so I'm just going to refer to a homework problem. Number 27 here. Um, on the double integral sheet where you're asked to take the double integral and it can't be, and I need to write it on paper because it's coming to kind of blurry right here once I zoom in on it a little bit. What you're asked to do is to reverse the order of integration so that you can actually evaluate it. Because currently, there's no way to evaluate this. There's no way to integrate one over yq plus one if you do y first. So sketch that region or you sketch it yourself, and then use the region that you graph to reverse the order to dx dy order. Because what's the antiderivative of this with respect to x? Keep in mind, when you're integrating x, who's a constant? Y. Any function of y. So that's like a 4. The antiderivative of 4 would be 4x. Four the antiderivative of this will be well, that times x, or x in the numerator. So get, get to cracking. Graph that region. Use the region you graph to reverse the order of integration. Because there is a problem like that on the test.
Yes, sir. What's the next step on the example we just said? Oh, the next step on the example? You just asked me to set up the limits. The next step would be to set up the double integral, you know, with the with the x choice we did first. Which function would we put inside the I didn't I didn't give a function. All I did was here's the region set up the limits. So it would, you know, then go into a double integral for whatever function you need to integrate. So this is one you can do pillar to post. You know, reverse the order of beginning to end. You can reverse the order of integration, and then it should turn into something you can integrate pretty easily. Have you done that one yet? Oh, some of you didn't get that far. I just wanted some similar test questions, things that are similar to what you see on the test. Who's got a graph you can come look at? See how your, your region looks. That's a y equals equation, and that's a y equals equation. So when you're going through this two-dimensional yes. region, you're going vertically through it. So the so first thing y hits is y equals the square root of x. The last thing y, so, so go ahead and grab that, y equals square root of x. Um, so there's... Okay, they're about to say that was cube root that you have there. Yeah. yeah, you did. Okay. Oh, I've got your test. Uh, okay. 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 Now you switch it to. <coughs> that one, that one, that one, that one, this one, area this right here? It's actually from 0 to 4. The X is first. Oh, then we switch it up. That's right. Yeah, I'll for it. Which area is it? So then it turns into some positive. Because yeah. it's bounded by the two. Because yeah. it's from zero to two. Yeah. Yeah. From yeah. zero to two. Is that is that correct? Sorry. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Testing centers are the way. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot the test is up there. That's the testing centers are the way. Okay. You didn't see anything, I promise. <laughs>
That's correct. No, can you kind of shade, you know? Oh, you did you already take the test? There you go. No. I don't think anybody in here is taking the test yet. Oh, I didn't know if that was what you just said. No, the one student who's taking it is one who never comes to class. Apparently, he had a, an, an agreement with Beth. Oh, really? He doesn't come to class. Okay. He probably just watched the video. Yeah. So he's getting his experience that way. That is correct. And you reversed it to. So if you do the, oh, if you do the X, oh, so you haven't switched it to X first. So X goes this way, and mm -hmm. then X. Okay, so. Well, that's. But, so X does start at zero, but this equation was originally this. Remember, you oh, gotta, yeah, got you got to redefine that. So is it zero to y squared? <laughs> no oh. I was giving sorry. everybody a few minutes to try it out. I'm sorry. So we just use the function instead of the four, and then uh, zero is the two on the outside. So, so again. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, dude. You're spoiling for everybody. Well, I think it's still looking long. Yeah, I see the right shapes. Okay, so that's the original one. It's okay. So, but that is the right region. You just want to redefine it so you're doing the dx dy. And that's right. So then we we still take the integral of the, the yeah. one over y cubed plus one. Mm -hmm. okay. And it should be manageable if you switch it to the dx dy. Yeah. Because if like if we wanted to, could we separate that for dx? Could we say integral of one integral of one over no, you well, don't have constant. We constant, constant limits. Limits. The yeah. only time you can do that is if your limits are constant. You're going to have variable limits either way you do it. Okay. So according to Y's limits of integration, the first thing Y hits, and again, which way is Y's direction? This way. Yeah. So as I go vertically through whatever this two-dimensional region is, the first thing I should hit, the first thing I hit is Y equals the square root of X, which is this sideways half parabola looking something like that. So Y comes in and it enters on Y equals the square root of X. The last thing y hits is the exit boundary, y equals 2, which is a horizontal line, through the y value 2, looking like this. So when you overlap the graphs, I mean, there's you know, a potential region you can kind of see there. When you cross-reference it with the x limits, x's limits go from 0 to 4. So when this region is flattened to the x-axis, x equals 0 to x equals 4, and that <coughs> happens to be the intersection point of the square root graph with the horizontal line. So your region of integration should look like this. And most of those, those of you who graphed it did graph it correctly. That's right. So now I want to switch the order. So now I want to do x's direction first. So you take a fresh copy of this, and you go from left to right. No matter where you go left to right, you're always going to enter at x equals 0. x goes from 0 to but then this curve right here can't be defined as y equals at root x anymore. You've got to redefine it as x equals y squared. So x enters at x equals 0, x will exit at x equals y squared. You see? Because that's the same thing as this curve was originally y equals the square root of x. But see, when you're doing y limits, the equation has to be in the form of y equals something. y equals root x, y equals 2. When you're switching it to x limits, you have to have the equation as x equals something. So you solve this for x, square both sides, and that's why that becomes the equation x equals y squared. x will enter at x equals 0, and x will exit at x equals y squared, as its limits. Then when this is flattened to the y-axis, what are the y limits left? 0 to 2. Oops, sorry. Let me see. And then when you change these limits, 0 to 2 for y, and then 0 to y squared for x. This turns out to be something manageable, all because you just changed the limits. So notice, changing the limits of integration, there's no, there's no way I can do this. And I'm not saying I'm smarter than all of you. I just got more experience with this stuff than you do. You have more experience with other things than I do. So, But with calculus 3, I can show you some good stuff. You can't just simply switch the limits on the intervals. You've got to, you've got to do a graph. I have to do a graph in order to see what the new limits are going to be. Um, and that way I can go ahead and rearrange it. And then if I integrate x first, your integration here with respect to x, remember all this business is constant with respect to x. So it turns out to be this constant times x as your antiderivative. That's it. 
And when you play in the y squared, the y squared goes in there, and technically you can multiply it with the one in the numerator. Makes a real nice UV substitution. Makes for a really awesome U substitution when you get to doing your y integration. So now when you integrate this with respect to y, and you anticipate this U sub, So I've got, I've got this going, this is going to become a u down here, 1 over u. I need a 3y squared to pair with dy. So if I fudge that 3, I need to counteract it with a 1 third. And again, I'm sorry if that, you know, is contradictory or, or counterproductive to the way you learned u subs in calculus too. That's just the way I'm always taught them. But, but, you know, some of you would solve this for y squared dy is 1 third du. Same thing. It's still going to introduce a 1 third there. So that way, and your original y limits were from 0 to 2. Don't let me forget that. So when I transform this integral, I've got a coefficient of 1 third in the front from the u sub adjustment. This, this part becomes 1 over u. And then 3y squared dy becomes du. And I'm going to change my limits. The bottom y limit of 0 becomes a u limit of 1. Top u limit, the, the top y limit of 2 becomes a u limit of 8 plus 1, 9. So you should end up with 1 third ln 9 minus ln 1. And ln 1 is 0, so 1 third natural log 9 should be your answer. Okay, so what did you, you do when you changed your limit? Oh, when you, have, when you do a u substitution on a definite integral, you can run these limits into the u sub, take the y value 0 and plug it in here y equals 0 corresponds to um, 0 plus 1, u equals 1. So a lower limit here of 0 becomes a lower limit on u equals 1. The top limit zero, uh, the top limit of y equals 2, because this is the dy integral, so that's a y value of 2. 2 to the third plus 1 is 9, so that would give me a top limit of 9. All you, you, can, do the, you can use the u substitution to change your limits. Did your cap two teacher not tell you that? That's always confused me. I've always been better off just... Okay. No, yeah, I, I you can like always you can always other. integrate u, get l and u, undo your u, and go back to the original zero to two limits. How many of you do it that way? Oh god, I'm gonna trap them waste of time. But you can do it that way. It's fine. I I I sense that sort of uncomfortableness from students before when I do this, and uh, but every time I do it, I sort of do it nonchalantly, like you know, and then you can do this and this, and it changes it, and boom. You, don't have to, it, you feel like you're, you're sliding off your original variable y. I don't want to go back to y. Okay. But no, it's, it's, the u sub is that personal. If you have constant limits, you can run those through there one at a time. And the bottom limit here becomes the bottom limit there. The top limit here through the u sub becomes the top limit there. Okay. Let me show you one more. To double check you on something. Okay, good. Um, do number 13 here. This is a double integral that's originally in rectangular. The instructions oh, yeah. say to convert it to polar. So convert that clear to polar. This wasn't the last one we just did was over 27. The last one was 27 15, on the 2. double integral homework. Okay, and there's, only, there's like a lot of problems on that. There's like 28 problems yeah. still on that set. On I don't know why I went so crazy on that three. set. But boom, wow. a lot of problems. Well, it does technically cover two sections. What yeah. would be equipped to two sections. <coughs> Y'all try this one. I'll be right back in the room and get something in my car.
getting converted? Is it? Is that, Let's see what you got. I was trying to start to work through it. Oh, yeah, you do. Okay, that one's kind of funky. Okay, the integrand, the, the integrand is correct. I thought about that. But don't forget, yeah. you, wanna, you want these to be R theta limits. you got to graph this region in rectangular to see what that refers to as R and theta limits. Okay. If you do it correctly, this should be constant. Yeah. So you did the integrand. Oh, okay, and then. Which? So, no spoilers. So. Do you get this excited in the testing center when you take a test, Matthew? Yeah. Like, that <laughs> verbal interjection. No, I, I, like, no. I can take it, but I'm still animated. Let's see. Mm, close. It's part of that. It's part just like um, this side because it's. So it's because X. This side. Or is it. Wait, wait, it's a negative side. Oh, right now, I'm just, I'm just saying things. Now. So it's just, is it the fourth quarter? Keep in mind, when you're dealing with an equation of a circle, there's several different ways you can represent this. If you solve this for y, you bring the x squared over, and you can get two equations from this. y equals the positive square root of 1 minus x squared. y equals the negative square root of 1 minus x squared. What would those two graphs look like? Okay, good. <laughs> Never seen this mark before, so it's new to me. Circle. And this is thing. Yeah, this one is. Yeah, so it's part of the end. Th these are two you can graph as functions. Just keep in mind they're proper, par they're half circles. So this should be a circle with radius one above the x axis. This should be a semicircle, excuse me. This should be a semicircle with radius one below the x axis. Oh, so it's the whole. But you could also take this equation and solve it for x. If you bring the y squared over, and then take your plus or minus square root on x, you get x equals positive root, sucks, 1 minus y squared, and you also get x equals negative root 1 minus y squared. So there's really four different ways you can morph that equation to get semicircles. The north semi, the south semi, the east semi, the west semi, okay? So this one would graph out. X equals positive root would take a circle of radius 1 and give you the, the positive half, x equals negative root, which I'm finally getting to the one that you see in your limits, yeah. is the left half. All these proportions are semicircles stemming from a full circle of radius 1. 